Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, be ooh, nearly, I nearly said it. Guess what time it is? Let's get on with the bridge. Right then, <clears throat> these are the goodies we're going to need today. This is not a tea strainer. There's a lot on there. This is what they call a static grass applicator. You'll see what that's for in a minute. We're going to need some PVA glue, obviously. Need that in your arsenal. I did say arsenal. Okay, and here we have the actual static grass. Now here, as you can see, it says they're red and green mixed. So I like to look like it's a bit um, autumnal, if you like. So a little bit of colorant in the grass itself. And this one, we've just got um, meadow mix, basically. Looks very bright on camera. It's not actually that bright in, uh, in real time. So we're, what we're going to do is add some of this with that to that. Well, not that, but around these areas here. Okay, so what I've got here, um, it's not milk is a, <laughs> about a 50-50 mix of um, PVA glue and water. Now, any time you're doing anything uh, from nature, really, um, particularly things like grass, just remember that um, nature is pretty random. So the more random you do it, the more effective um, it's going to be. So we're just going to pop this on and uh, you'll, you'll see how we go. I might do a bit of a voiceover as I'm going along. Plenty on, you're going to need that, and you'll see why shortly. Doesn't matter if we go over the sides, but if we do, it probably looks better. A lot of people do this with um, like an eyedropper or a pipette. That's fine, great if it works, and it generally does, so good, all is good. Yeah, like I say, pretty random, and a lot of this is going to soak in anyway, which is also fine. So that helps see this down. So you can see very quickly getting through <clears throat> the amount of watered down glue that I made. But let's try and if I can follow the edge. The road where it meets the grassy section, and yes, as before, we will be making a mess. <laughs> if you live on your own, that's great. Actually, <laughs> you've got nobody to answer to but yourself, yourself, yourself. Terrible. So, I think for the moment, this side. That will suffice, just put that over to one side. <clears throat> and then what we do, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to start with the standard green. Um, so I'll show you what we do with that. Right, this thing only runs off AA batteries, but believe me, it packs a serious punch and you will get a good belt off it. I don't know how it works, it's beside me. So try and keep that away from that while you're charged. For the moment, we just disconnect. We add into this container the um, grass that we intend to use. Now, static grass comes in different colours, different shades, different lengths, different sizes, depends on your scale or the effect that you're looking for, to be honest. <coughs> so, you know, yeah. Um, Two millimetre grass, three, four, five, six, seven, eight millimetre grass, whatever. <clears throat> so you just pop it in there, clip this back down, and this is obviously your strainer. <clears throat> so now all we do is put this end into the wet glue. We get this in position where the wet glue is. We hold 
that button there that becomes alive and that attracts the grass to the glue. Uh, do not touch that to that. So there we go, we're going to start on this side. See, we're laying down lots of nice grass over here. This is all sides. I don't know if you can see this side um, at the moment. That's looking nice. And that's how we do that. Now we'll give you an idea of the amount of charge that's in these things because it's a good idea to discharge it and I said don't touch that but to discharge it you're going to have to do a quick tap and you'll see how much power is there. See that? It's like one of those fly swatters. Now of course as before once it's dry tip it over and shake off the excess. I'm going to put some of that multicolour on this side, just for a bit of variation. I may come back in uh, at a later date and put some on the other side as well, but it was how it looks. Like I say, I really want to stay as um, random as possible. Where possible. I did say I might do a voiceover, <laughs> we'll see. Old habits die hard. Let's get a bit more on that now. I do want to try and right on the edge there. What should do us? That's a nice mix of all that um, green and red static grass. That's looking nice, I think. Don't forget to discharge the power. There we go. If you touch that, believe me, it will remind you. There we go, a nice close up. Give you an idea of what the grass is looking like. Some lovely reds in there, that's what I was saying about the autumnal feel. That's looking lovely. This is only two millimetre grass, so it's not going to stick up too much. I mean, you can add to it and put longer grass in it at a later date. But looking at the uh, reference photographs and the video, it doesn't have very long grass around these areas at all. Super. Okay, it's time to um, give the bottom of the water. Bottom of the water? <laughs> Base of the river. 
uh, at least a, a starter coat of paint. Now, looking on the video and checking the reference photos, it's nothing exciting at all. It's basically grey water. Um, you know, it's a, a still river, there's not a lot of movement. So I'm going to have to take some uh, artistic liberties with that. So for the moment, I'm just going to use a, like a grey starter. And I'm using some um, <coughs> Flintstone Grey, which is actually from Wilco's in the UK. It's the, like a tester pot. I think I've got more tester pots than, of paint in there, actually. Have. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to start. It doesn't need to be fabulous. It doesn't matter if it's a bit lumpy. Because I'm going to want to add... Some movement to this at some point, some water effects to make it look like there's movement. <clears throat> we need to make a start somewhere. So I'm just gonna, gonna, I'm just going to carry on doing this. This should dry pretty quick because it's like an air emulsion, which is good because we can go another paint. So I'll get on with that and then we'll come back and set on that. So there we go, that's that uh, first coat on. You can actually see it's starting to take a little shape now. Now you can see the white stri stri streaky stripy bits where the brush has gone, the brush strokes, which is absolutely fine. I'm happy with that. That grey will dry uh, a lot lighter than it is at the moment. And um, the reason I'm not bothered about the brush strokes because uh, for me it looks like movement. So I will be adding, I'm going to add a little bit of some kind of blue. Um, not, not too blue, not uh, pastel paint, um, schoolroom blue. <laughs> Just trying to blend it in a little bit of the blues and the greys. I say a little bit of artistic liberties. Um, just to, to uh, fluff it up a bit really, so as soon as that's dry we'll come back with that. Okay, I'm going to add what's going to seem to be, what are you doing that for, blue? <laughs> it's a really, really, uh, like a pastel blue. However, this is all I'm doing. The plan is, and we are... Quite literally, making this up as we go along, just to add little bits of colour and movement where we can. Again, I, don't, I want to see movement, I don't want it to look like a raging river because it wasn't. So, this is literally just smudging, and yes, smudging is a word that I just made up. <clears throat> so, once that's dry, it will fade in more to the grey. <coughs> and then we'll come back in with a darker wash, just to dull it all back down again. Okay, now I'll come back, uh, not quite dry, it's drying. Um, so what I've got here is, um, it's basically just some black paint that I've mixed up for my airbrush. So I've thinned it with water, obviously, and some uh, uh, Windoloon so it flows nice and easy so it's nice and thin um, but um, you know if it's over the top then we can always start again and re-grey everything. <laughs> I think this might be a little bit, oh, I don't know, well that's all right actually, there might be a, bit, a little bit much but uh, just want to drag that blue as you can see. I'm just dipping my brush into the paint. I know that's still wet there. And that's drawing that out quite nicely actually. There we are. I do want to start tucking in around these edges where possible. There we are. Again. Random is always, always best. 
because around the edges it's generally darker anyway. I sort of stand still forever. For those of you who don't know, in the movie, or for the movie, should I say, um, this bridge was basically the string, should I say, a couple of inches deep. Uh, obviously for the film that's no good, because they needed the mate list to plunge deep and obviously perish. So what they did, they dammed the river further down and let the water build up, obviously. It's created that effect that we saw on the film. Um, so, this is why. And I often watch people doing water tutorials and resin and everything else. You know, they put stones in, so it was nice effect, it was great. And then they very concerned about how many bubbles are in it and so on. But if you look at a moving river where there's rocks underneath an undercurrent, they're all bubbles. It's never ever perfectly clear of bubbles. Just observation. I'm not even no specialist on this kind of thing. See it's got movement there. I'll leave that to dry and uh, I might come back and do it again because it's uh, starting to blend really nice. So there we are, that's had another coat. I quite like that. I'm not going to do any more to that at the moment. Uh, I've got some other ideas I want to do on this river bed, uh, which is going to be a whole new uh, episode, to be fair. Um, it's uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a technique I learned from Marcus of Sweden on his um, railway channel, Absolute Star Wire. If I remember, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, so I think we're going to put the bridge back on now and uh, see what we've got. There we go. It's all starting to come together now. Obviously, still a way to go yet. As we get a little bit further down there, they give you a much better perspective. The thing's coming together. Lots still to do. River to finish. Vegetation to add. Trees to put in. Lots and lots of things to see. <laughs> Here's a blast from the past. And there they are, just approaching the bridge. So, always moving forward, as I always say, every little helps, as other people say. Mm, not sponsored. So there you are. Right, so, there you go. You don't seem to achieve much in a long period of time. Um, preparation, application, clean up, it goes on. So, that's it for now. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Um, I don't want to drag the videos out to half an hour, 40 minutes. Occasionally I get one, I can't help that. Um, so hopefully you're enjoying the Beetle Juice Bridge build. Don't forget you can still buy me a coffee if you want to. I like coffee. Link in the description down there. Sorry. Anyway, thanks for that. You don't have to buy me anything. Just watch the videos, enjoy. Leave a comment, let me know if you think it's coming along nicely or you might like one of those or it, if there's only one. Uh, so stay safe out there. Start to look like a hippie. Roll on the hairdressers coming back. Or barbers, in case maybe. Don't mind it. Stay safe, like I said, and I'll see you next time.